Well, 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 how the turns have tabled. Look at Jim Dunaway in the beautiful L.A. sun on the hills of Alabama, punching an Elite Eight ticket. Hello, Jim Dunaway. How are things in L.A. this morning? Well, here's a quick weather update. Uh, the sun is rising over here. This is the first day out here where there has been no cloud cover really over us. And we've seen the sunrise in the, uh, I assume that's the east over there. It has been a <laughs> It's a the same in L.A. Few... as it is everywhere. Yes, it is the east, yes. <laughs> It has been a whirlwind few hours uh, since we last talked to you on the video platform last night. I'd like to tell you what the inside of my room looks like, uh, but I probably can't tell you. Yeah, it, it, it got late quick last night. It got late quick, and uh, Alabama's still alive, man, still alive. And um, I was trying to let you guys know, um, I said, hey, Brownie, I'm going to need some help if Alabama loses to North Carolina. I don't, I've never had to change a flight and move it up. I'm booked to leave on Sunday. Uh, my hotel was only through Friday. <laughs> I don't know how we got into that situation. Um, but I uh, extended my hotel, and uh, the flight is going to stay as is. One more game. Okay? They got another game out here in L.A. And what a night. What a night. What a night. That Clemson-Arizona game first was yeah. amazing. Yeah, it was an incredible and, game. Yeah. yeah. And then you sit back and watch the ebbs and flow of North Carolina um, and Alabama. And we talked about it. We talked about it, Brown, as that clock starting to tick down late it looked like the pressure uh started to mount on the name brand number one seed and they seemed to be gassed at the end and alabama felt found another another gear a little more energy at the end to pull out the big win to punch their ticket to the uh elite eight yeah to play clemson you mentioned the uh, outcome of the arizona game i've i've uh, updated my arizona artwork there with the uh, black ribbon wildcats are dead <laughs> Uh, we, we may, yeah. it, uh, there's a lot bigger stuff to talk about today than how that loss impacts our bracket challenge. I mean, if we don't get to that today, I'm fine. Uh, but my, uh, my national champion is, uh, is no more. So Alabama will not play Arizona to go to the elite eight. They'll play Clemson to go to the elite eight. Um, wow. So let's, before we get into any of that, we got, we got plenty of time to talk Bama Clemson and coming up in the next segment, Dunaway, uh, hit the Bama locker room. Uh, at the end of the game, and if you have missed it on social media, we'll give you the interviews uh, that Jim did with the star of the game, Grant Nelson, Mark Sears. Um, you'll hear from Greg Byrne, the Alabama Athletics Director. Um, who else we got on there, Dunaway? Uh, Nick Pringle. Oh, my gosh. Nick Pringle. So we got a lot to talk about with him. Let's just talk about the game in general. So uh, as you sat courtside there, let's let's attack the first half first. You know, Alabama kind of dug a hole. I think they were down by 10. They come back, they tie it, they briefly take the lead, and then that spurt by Carolina at the end of the half, that felt monumental because though I have not watched Carolina all year, I'm told by everybody that has, they were a second-half team this year. So when they made that spurt at the half, boy, it felt like Alabama, that first four minutes was going to be so critical of the second half. Uh, it really was, Brown. You know, Mark Sears, they were, the, you know, the guys and the plan they had for Mark Sears to take him out of rhythm was amazing. He did not score a point, I think, until six minutes into the game. So you had to have other people step up, and they did. After digging a 10-point hole, they fought back. But then, and people may forget this, you know, because he's not going to be on the top of the list of the, of the box score, but Mark Sears scored 14 points in the final 14 minutes of the first half. Uh, and then in the second half, he only gets two for like the first 17 minutes, and then he has a big bucket and a big assist late that gives him the win. Um, and this is going to sound weird, but because of the, how committed North Carolina was defensively uh, to uh, eliminating Mark Sears, it was almost like the coaching staff for Carolina went in and said, if we can take Mark Sears away from them, if we can keep Mark Sears and, and stop him from controlling the game, we can beat this team. And I think a lot of Alabama fans said, if Al you know, if, if Mark Sears has a game, then Alabama can win. But if Mark Sears doesn't have an A game, um, probably can't. Well, Sears still had a really good game. But then you had Nelson, Estrada, Rylan Griffin, so many big plays from Nick Pringle just working his butt off in the paint on Baycott on one leg for the last 12 minutes. It was such a team effort. And, and the way that first half ended – you just wondered if it was going to be too big of a hole. A couple of times in the game, I thought it had gotten away from Alabama. And then they just kept hanging around. They kept hitting some big threes. 
and then they get the win at the end. It just tightened up on Baycott and R.J. Davis, and, and Carolina got bounced. Uh, again, Dunaway's coverage out in L.A. presented by MyBookie.ag. Code next round. Alabama opened as a three-point favorite over Clemson for a trip to the Final Four. We'll discuss more about that with Todd Furman coming up a little bit later on. You know, it, it was crazy, Dunaway. The scouting report told uh, Nate Oates, and Nate Oates said this in his first time out interview uh, with, uh, with, with CBS, that you really don't have to close out on Cadeau and Trimble. They can't shoot from the outside. So what do Cadeau and Trimble do? They hit their first four threes. And you're like, yep. you know, what's, what's going on here? I thought I did not have to guard those guys. That was when, that was the moment where I thought, oh, this, this may not go well for Alabama. If Cadeau and Trimble are going to hit threes, I, I don't know how they defend this team. But to Nato's credit, he was like, the scouting report's the scouting report for a reason, right? And if those guys have the game of their life, we're not winning this game anyway. I'm going to keep my defensive philosophy, and you got to credit Oates for sticking with that. Yeah, it was a great game plan. But to your point at halftime, I was talking with Brian Passing uh, back in the hallways. Um, and at halftime, he was like, Jim, uh, I think I forget which one of them had hit eight threes all year, and the yep. other one had hit 11 threes I know. all year, yep. all season, eight and 11. And then they hit, they were four or five in the first half, those two guys. So they were dropping a guy off of them and really trying to take R.J. Davis or Baycott away from the rotation there and forcing the other guys to hit it. And then they were hitting them. But, you know, metrics and analytics are metrics and analytics for a reason. So you're right. Credit Nate Oates and the staff for hanging with that saying, man, if if we let R.J. get hot, we know how that is. So let's see if the guy, let's see if, let's see if those guys that have only hit eight and 11 threes all year, Let's see if they can stay hot. And to your and to the credit of that, R.J. Davis, O of nine from beyond the arc. So, yep. you, you you know you, you you said I don't think these guys could do it. I'm going to stay on the guy that's that's a first team All ACC player, and I'm going to let these other guys shoot. And for whatever reason, Trimble did not try another one. He hit both of his. Now he only played 11 minutes. He hit both of his, but that was it. But Cadeau, he did what you wanted him to do. He kept shooting, thinking, "Oh, I'm hot tonight." And then, I mean, he missed everything on, like, his third one, and you do. Okay, yeah, that's that's the guy that I saw in the scouting report right there. A hundred percent. And uh, um, early on, I mean, in the first half, Brownie, I think it was 62% threes for North Carolina. Bama hit 50% of theirs. They were 7 of 14 in the first half and threes. We were on pace to easily fly yep. over 173. And then we came out in the second half and watched a basketball game between North Carolina and Alabama that, I mean, it felt like it went 10 minutes and maybe they split 10 points each at that point. It slowed down and uh, I don't, I, you know, cold shooting, whatever it was, great defense, um, you know, credit to that Alabama team. And, you know, that defense is, it's, it's, it's been, it's been the talking point all year. It's been yep. the, the talking point all year. And, it was you. We made the point on the post game last night. What did it come down to at the end? The irony of all ironies, as much as we have spent talking about Alabama's defense, and Nate Oates has talked about it, Ken Palm has given you the ratings and all those things, the thing that clinched the win for Alabama was a shot clock violation by North Carolina. <laughs> I mean, I, I would have picked yeah. a thousand different ways Alabama locks up a win than forcing a shot clock violation from North Carolina. Because that's a good yeah. offense. I mean, they're a good offense. And, I mean, ultimately that's what did it. And you – I mean, that it was, and it wasn't just crap North Carolina shooting. They couldn't get good looks. I mean, Alabama locked them down defensively on that final possession and uh, forced the shot clock violation. And you're like – I mean, that, that to me, that's one of the greatest ironies I've seen. That's right. It's, it, it's like um, bad kicker. Hitting a, hitting a 58-yarder to win the game, you know? A yeah. guy whose his range is only 44, but they've got to try it here, and he nails it, or whatever other analogy you want to do in any other sport, that it was the defense that has been the calling card now in three wins for this team, um, but some great offensive performances. And I'll say this, Bram, uh, and we see it in our chat every day, every day, and it doesn't change. I mean, one game does not change that. But Grant Nelson has been a a target for a lot of Alabama fans all year. I'm trying to think of some of the things we've seen in the chat room. One of them, I think we got sold a bill of goods. I think that was one. Uh, Wish we'd had connect instead of, you know, him, if we were going to go to the portal. You know, you you heard those things all year long, right? I'm not, I'm not. No, 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 you're not, you're not. Yeah. 
Yeah, or he's he's been bad the last month. Yep. I hope I wish Grant Nelson would get back to being good. That kid last night, uh, massive offensive game, but also massive defensively down in the paint and blocking shots. Um, just it was the game of his life. That was one thing I asked him afterwards. I said, "Is that was that the game of your life?" And he was like, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I don't have the stats in front of me. What do you end up, Brand? What was the points and the rebounds? It was a 22 oh, 12. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he had a double double pretty early 24 and 12. Yeah. Um, and then five blocks. I mean, that's what's crazy 24 yeah. and 12. Five blocks, including, by the way, <laughs> the last block of the game, where, I mean, Carolina's just going to heave a prayer after he missed that free throw. And, uh, you know, he blocks it, and that ends the game. So, yeah, 24, 12, and five blocks. I mean, that is your dream. 10 of 13 from the strike, by the way. 10 of 13. And we missed his last two. And I want to get into that in a second. Let's talk about Dr. Ooh. B real quick. Yeah. Let's talk because that made it, it made it tricky. He, well, anyway, Dr. B, that's the guy that has grown ha- uh, Lance's hair back, and he can do the same for you. T3hair.net. T3hair.net for our guy, Dr. Beckenstein. Um, if you're watching this on video, you see the in office visit that Lance took with Dr. B. That's where. Yeah, they just they, they look around, they give you the consultation, and sometimes they'll tell you, hey, listen, it's just too far going, but a lot of times they're telling you, yeah, absolutely, we can help you. And then he comes up with a plan of attack, and you do a virtual visit with Dr. B, and he runs through a couple of options. There is no cookie-cutter option here. It is whatever is the best option for you, and there are many of them. Lance selected one. He's used it. He's gotten great results. You can do the same. T3hair.net for Dr. B, t 3 Hair dot net our guy dr beckenstein good for men and women by the way so grant nelson goes to the stripe at the end bama up two um and i was already thinking do you hit one miss if you hit them both obviously you're you're winning the game it's a four point game you don't even have to play defense there's 0.9 left when he if you hit the first one it's a three point game and then i'm thinking you know you want to hit the second one but if you miss the second one it's not that bad because they don't have a timeout but when he missed the first one, and Jim Jackson, you weren't you were the, you were in the arena. Jim Jackson asked this on the telecast. He's like, "What do you do here? Do you try to miss? Do you try to make?" He's like, "If you make, obviously, the worst they could do is force overtime. But if you miss, they they got no shot to get a decent playoff here." And I don't know what you were thinking in the arena. And I don't know that Grant Nelson has said. I have not seen it so much in the post game. If he said if he was trying to miss or make or just try to get it close, I don't know. What were you thinking in the arena there? Uh, I had my eyes closed at that point. I don't know. I was on my knees and and couldn't see. No, I was thinking through the whole game. um, And it was funny because you and I watched Auburn have an unbelievable half against number one seed Houston last year. And then the second half, they started missing free throws. And every time Alabama missed a free throw, at one point they had gotten down into the 60%. I don't know where they ended up free throws last time, but they'd gotten into the 60% in the game. They probably got it back into the 70s. But it was uh, it was some missed key free throws, and I thought, God, are they going to lose this game on missed free throws? And then when he missed those two, I was like, Oh, a Leitner situation here, or a, a half court shot. And if this thing, you know, if it were to go to overtime, or if they walk it off here, it would just be devastating off of missed free throws. Yeah. And uh, but luckily, it didn't happen. Well, I, I do think. Uh, given the choice on that second one, you would want to hit it to make it at least a three-point game. Again, if you hit both of them, this doesn't matter because it's a four-point game and you you can go stand on the sideline and watch North Carolina do anything they want. There's no chance of them winning the game. But once he missed, you know, that's with them not having a timeout, uh, a miss is better than a make. And my, yeah, I mean, I, it's a very low percentage either way, but I, I like my chances better getting to inbound the ball without the clock running to get a decent look from half court than have to get a rebound turn and heave. Uh, and to Grant yep. Nelson's credit, he missed and didn't sulk. He played defense, and I don't that shot was not going to go, but it's certainly not going to go when he hits it. Yeah, exactly right. And he's smart enough not to get too close to where it's a foul, too, by the yep, way. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so that, that, that's a smart move. You don't get frustrated and try to block it and end up getting a, a three, three free throw foul called. But you're right to your point is that Everybody runs a, a one-second play yep. from the end line to the game ender. It's just part of practice, part of what you do. There's plays to do that where you try to do the Leitner or whatever. So uh, everybody runs that, and when it's just a rebound reaction, that is just uh, it's just chaos, and it worked out for Alabama's favor last night. Yeah, there's no doubt it did. So Alabama is on to the Elite Eight. We're going to hear the interviews, uh, watch the interviews and hear them coming up in, in the next segment, but – 
you were in that locker room pretty quickly after Nate Oates had uh, told Jaron Stevenson those kids in Chapel Hill aren't practicing tomorrow and the water had been thrown around and Grant Nelson got the hard hat and and slapped Alabama's name into the Elite Eight. So you were in the locker room shortly after all of that. Just describe the atmosphere in the Alabama locker room when you went in. Uh, celebration had cranked back up a little bit because the way it works, there's a 10-minute cooling off period. And um, then they take the head coach and two stars down to a interview in the main interview room up on the podium. We got some of that up as well uh, with Nate Oates. And um, so you've got Mark Sears and you've got Grant Nelson that leaves with Nate there. Then the room is open. And I go in there and Nate had already, and you can go to, and I encourage everyone to do this. It's not on our platform, but Alabama men's basketball, their account, they, they, they shoot out, they shoot video that we can't get to inside the locker room. And it's an amazing celebration scene. And then you just go check it out. We'll talk about it later, what, uh, what Nate Oates says to the team about Monday's practice. Um, it, it just it was, it was uh, very emotional still when you got in there. And you'll see in the interview coming up, uh, Nick Pringle, one of, the, one of the baddest, meanest, no, I won't say meanest, roughest guys, toughest guys on the court, uh, talking about how he was in tears. And it, it meant a lot to this team to knock off the one seed. Uh, and they, they quickly turned their attention to Clemson when we started interviewing them. But uh, you could tell that there was a weight lifted off this team a little bit to become only the second team in Alabama history to get there. Very emotional from the athletic director all the way down to the managers. Yeah, there, there's no doubt. There's a lot of angles we'll take on this game. Just a weird night in that arena to see Clemson play the way they did against Arizona. And that was not a fluke. Clemson played better than Arizona. They just outplayed Arizona. I don't think Arizona was very smart. They kept taking contested threes when a two would have worked. I don't know what they were doing. I obviously have a personal investment in that situation, having picked them uh, as my national champion, as a reminder. Uh, I don't know what Arizona was doing, but uh, I, I don't know. Like, sometimes you just get a feel, hey, this is kind of a weird atmosphere. Did you feel that way after Arizona Clemson? Just like, man, I've just seen a pretty big upset. It's just kind of a weird atmosphere in here tonight. Yeah, we were talking about – I was on the Crimson Tide Sports Network helping kill uh, – they, they have a set time they have to go on, and if they're the second game, they don't know how long yeah. they're going to have to kill time. So they, they said, hey, would you come eat some segments for us like you do on the next round? <laughs> and they're kind enough to mention our platform there all the time when I do that. So I jump on with them courtside, and, you know, they're, they can't do play-by-play -play of the game, but we're reacting to some of the plays. And the Clemson team, so good at passing – Really good guard play, but they just – ball movement is so good and then just a stingy defense. And I would caution Alabama fans, you don't need me to caution you, you know it's the NCAA tournament, anything can happen. But just because Arizona is beaten and you've knocked off North Carolina and it's not going to be the dream CBS 1-2 North Carolina, Arizona that I'm sure the TV execs want, it's going to be the, the one the football execs want, <laughs> Alabama and Clemson, <laughs> the Davo Nick reunion tour. Um, so I would caution, don't, don't punch that final four ticket just yet. Remember this Clemson team came to Tuscaloosa, won in Coleman Coliseum, breaking a 20 game home win streak for Alabama. That team Clemson has gotten better since they came to Tuscaloosa. Alabama got better after that loss, then sort of fell off and you hope they're ramping it up again to get back to where they were at some point early in the SEC season. But this is no give me coming up just because the number is not a one or a two beside the name in the bracket. Uh, Dunaway, you've been out there on the left coast. They've got the Coca-Cola Spiced out there in L.A. as well. Coca-Cola Spiced with that great raspberry flavor. And uh, it's the flavor you love with Coke Classic and that raspberry flavor added. Yeah, in fact, they, I should have taken a picture of it inside. Um, where was it? I think it was inside the arena. Yeah. I think it was in the CBS TNT uh, cantina area where they feed the broadcasting partners there was a cooler that had Coca-Cola spice. Mm. And so they had one of those stand up coolers. And I thought, man, that would look good in our studio there. Uh, Coca-Cola spice. I think it is the flavor of spring and summer 2024. Uh, and it may be the flavor that I remember Alabama's elite eight run with because uh, of that raspberry. And then that little spice kick at the end, just like a Grant Nelson drive to the basket. It's refreshing. It's Coca-Cola Spiced. Uh, elsewhere, before we go to break, we'll come back to Alabama uh, with the uh, interviews Jim did there in Crypto.com Arena after the game last night. Um, you know, I don't know if UConn deserves to be in the Elite Eight, Jim. They only beat San Diego State by 30 in a Sweet 16 game. 
Uh, this team is an absolute machine. They beat Stetson 91-52, UConn 75, or Northwestern, excuse me, 75-58, and San Diego State 82-52. This is as dominant through three rounds as we've ever seen a team be in the NCAA tournament. Yes, and they are uh, they're trying to be the first repeat national champion since Florida did it with Billy Donovan back in the day. And this team, uh, you know, when Auburn got knocked out, that helped their path. And so now they are into the Elite Eight. And, you know, they get Illinois, who sort of pulled another upset. Uh, so if, if Alabama fans are lucky enough to, to be watching that game, you got to worry about yourself. But I would, I would say uh, everybody, everybody becomes an Illini fan yeah. on Saturday. I, uh, not that you can't beat UConn, but it's, it's you know, it's the sports gods are weird. Alabama's longest run in NCAA tournament history ended against who? UConn. Yep, UConn. UConn, yep. yep. And if Alabama's fortunate enough to get to the Final Four, there would be UConn again on, at that point, the longest run in Alabama history. That UConn team back then in 2004 went on to win the national champion. This one's favored to do it again this year. Listen, they don't they don't give out these these Final Fours and national championship trophies um, for beating bad teams. Eventually, yep. you got to beat great teams like Alabama did last night with North Carolina. You're going to have to play great teams the rest of the way. I mean, think about it. We always talk about how tough this championship is, Brown. Alabama on this amazing run so far as we sit here on a sunny morning in L.A., and they're only halfway to a national championship. I know. It's, I know. It's, we talk about it all the time. You make the Elite Eight, you've done something, but you're still halfway home. I mean, it, it's what's insane yeah. about this tournament. Um, yeah. I, I One of the most ardent Auburn fans I know, this guy is orange and blue till the day he dies, sees a ticket holder at Jordan Hare and Neville Arena, texted me during the Alabama and UConn games as they were both going on. Um, and, well, really, UConn had finished up, and uh, Illinois and Iowa State had already started. And he said, look, I did not want to lose to Yale, but I'm realistic enough to tell you we were not beating UConn. <laughs> he goes, I just sat here and watched them against San Diego State. I would like to have been there. Don't get me wrong. We are not beating them. And, but the Alabama and North Carolina wasn't finished, he said. But part of me is glad I don't have to sit through a night where Alabama might go to the Elite Eight and we would have lost to UConn. So I don't want it to end that way. But part of me is glad I didn't have to deal with that. Yeah, I, I get that feeling. Um, but you never know. You never know what would happen in a matchup or a game. And that's what makes this tournament so crazy. And, um, you know, I, I really believe more often than not in college football, we crown the best team in the country the national champion. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I it's a little fluky at the end, but I believe usually in college football, the national champion is the best team in college football. I would say rarely, rarely, less than 50% of the time, does the best team in college basketball win the national championship because yep. this tournament is so, so difficult. So any night, uh, you know, you just take your chance against the great teams.